one of the really interesting things about these money personalities is you have to remember there's no right and there's no wrong. And you're not just one note. Right. You're, you're dominant two. in one, right? You're dominant exactly. in one, and then usually you have a secondary one. I'm primary a spender, but then I'm also a security seeker. That's confusing for a lot of people because it's like, well, aren't those kind of opposites? Yeah. They are. I have terrible buyer's remorse. I love to spend, but then I feel guilty about it an hour <laughs> later. And so even, even in ourselves, we can find the turmoil. But if you take a couple and you have four of those different money personalities or three of those different money personalities, it can just make the relationship crazy financially. Living with multiple personalities. Yeah. Exactly. Right. exactly. Oh my. Yeah. Exactly. And for so long, I would not understand because I knew that Scott and I had kind of the same bent towards money, but then we'd come into these conflicts. And it was interesting when we analyzed it and where was the conflicts coming in? It was in our secondary money personalities because I was, I'm a risk taker and he's a security seeker. So I would see a, a land opportunity or some kind of investment opportunity. I'd be like, woohoo, let's go. And he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's do the, the sampling. Great, the great thing and, and that is is the potential for balance. Right. Absolutely. I mean, right. the opposites attract, yes. don't they? It, and, it, in, yes. In relationship yep. and financially. Yep. And I think it's God's brilliant design it because is. we get the best of everything if uh, we can meet. In the middle and Peaceably. understand and compromise and learn that. Mm -hmm. We find that 60% of couples have opposite many personalities. So there's, we don't believe that there's a mistake, that there's a high divorce rate and those percentages going on. So if we can get in there, understand each other, and you will be amazed, it affects every decision that you make. How you see money affects how you approach a decision. So if you are both approaching and a decision coming from different perspectives, that can be a great thing when you learn how to do it together. But if you don't, you will have conflict throughout your relationship. Now, I haven't fully given the picture of, of who you two are. Okay. You married in 1998. Right. And you established, there's a cute story there because you, you were dating someone else and yeah. you connected Scott with your dad. You <laughs> sent him to another state. Right, to exactly. Go work with your dad. Yep. But eventually caught the vision and established together Envoy Financial. Yes. Exactly. You are full time financial planners who yes. help people make it work. Yes, and we, we have a focus of uh, focusing on retirement planning, helping organizations and Christian ministries set up great retirement plans because that time of your life is, can be such an exciting time if you have enough dollars to do it. And then if you can put the communication piece into that retirement planning, oh, it can be such a great time of life. I want to talk about the boomerang issue, but I, let's <laughs> give another graphic quickly while we're here because uh, uh, part of the processing, mm -hmm. especially when you're in a crisis, yes. has to do with dumping. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Getting it all out on the table. We tell people to do that first because you, ought, you first figure out where your money personalities right. and then do this money dump. You know, it's so important. It's where do we start? We've got mm -hmm. all this tension and where do we start with getting moving forward. So the first really that's important is the D. Do it yourself and totally be honest. And what that means is you're going to get out a piece of paper and write the pros and the cons. You do have some pros in your relationship. What they are, I don't know, but you have to have, <laughs> you have a roof three over or your four. Head right. Or, One yeah. of us has a job or we have a car that works. Come up with those pros because those are so important. So even if you're laid off, Absolutely. Yes. Nobody's breadwinning at the moment. Right. right. There are positives. And, and part of what we do is with our finances is everything becomes so intense and so serious and so negative that we can't get out of that. And you have to break that. Then you write the cons. And there might be a lot of cons. And they might stretch over a lot of years of hurt. Mm. But you've got you've to do the D. You just dump it out. Now, is this private table. at first? At first, mm -hmm. it's private. Okay. Because you need to be by yourself and you need to be in a safe place to do that. Okay. So that's, that's, that's the D. Then you have the U. And that's understand the financial pros and cons in your relationship. That's really hashing those out through your mind. What's real in this relationship? Once you've done that, then you do the M, meet together. That's when you come together for the conversation. And start with the pros. Start, oh, that's huge. Pros. Please don't start with the cons yes, because no. then you'll never get to the pros. Right. Yeah, and the other up. person won't even be able to hear any of those pros. You've got to start off on the positive note and say, hey, we're together. We're still a family. We've got this, 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 and that. We've we got support. We, we love, love each other. We love each other. And Something we want to make this for. work. Yes. Yes. And that's, that's huge. Yes. Then when you meet and talk about the cons, just pick two. 
oftentimes we'll find that one person's like 30, right. 30 negatives or 30 challenges. So the and P like, is the pick the two cons. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the, the word down the P is pick the two cons. That's where you're going to start, exactly, exactly like Bethany said. <laughs> because you don't want to just rattle off a bunch of negatives. That's not a very good way to start. Plus, think about the positive momentum you're going to get as a couple. If you're starting right. with two of the things, one that bugs you and one that bugs me, and two months from now that's resolved, you've just moved your financial relationship up 200%. Then you tackle the other two. Then you tackle the other two. And in a year or two years, your relationship is totally transformed. You're on the same page about money. Your finances are on total agreement. And then when you're in a better, better financial position, it's just, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. This isn't just a lovely theory. You see mm. the miracles happen. Absolutely. Debt is a number one issue with couples. And I'm just checking our Canadian stats. Are, are you ready for this? Well, you, I'm sure both Canada and America are turning <laughs> into a cashless society. Oh, it's all are. about the plastic. Yeah. Um, heavy reliance on that credit card. And the debt in September here in Canada was $78 billion. Uh, is cutting the credit card in half something you advocate? Well, you know, it's interesting. We just read a statistic that said that people work, worry three hours a day about their money, finances, and debt. Three hours a day. Oh, boy. And cutting up a credit card isn't going to stop the worry. It's not going to make the challenge go away. So it's not that it's, it's actually like any kind of addiction. If you just take the liquor away from an alcoholic, that's not going to do any good. Mm. We've got to get down into some deeper issues. Healing. How did yeah. we get there in the first place? Mm -hmm. Do a money dump. What are some of the pros? So what are some of the cons? Let's start to understand each other, our spending habits, why we spend money the way we do. Is one a spender? Is one a security seeker? Why are we having these tensions? And you know what we find? Is that that debt will go away because you are working together and understanding each other and you understand together that that's an issue and something that you need to work through. I wish we had more time, but I have sure. to bring this sure. up. Um, because we're, you know, the boomerang generation, uh, yeah. the children are either not leaving or they are returning in droves. Mm. And uh, can you put yourself at that life stage? It's down the road for you. Uh, do, do, do parents assume the financial responsibility? Uh, I would say uh, allow them to be little dependents yeah, again, big it's, dependents. It's really tough. Not only are we seeing the boomerang generation, but we're almost seeing the second pass of the boomerang generation, mm. where you get them again from college, then they get that job, they kind of get established, and then for often we were seeing this divorce rate continue to climb. So they come back, and home? they come back, but then they've got two kids with them, and so it's it's here's here's the key to the boomerang generation. It's you have to remember a lot of it's based on circumstances. What's real? If my kid just got out of college and he's home and he's looking for jobs and he's picking up whatever he can pick up and he's just trying to get employed, then participating and helping him, I don't have an issue with. If he's coming home and he's just sitting in front of the TV playing Nintendo or whatever, then, you, then we have a problem. And that's when you need to get them out and say, listen, I'm willing to help you, but this, you're out of, high, you're out of college, you're out of university, wherever. You need to start really driving forward. Same is true when they come back with other kids. It's all based on circumstances. Do you foot the whole bill? Absolutely not. You have to make sure that they're participating in the finances, and it's a great time for a family meeting. I think what the major issue is, we don't know how to set realistic expectations in that situation. If you're getting a boomerang family coming back into your house, are we talking six months? Are we talking a year? Is this a transition to a new career? Boundaries. Boundaries, <laughs> huge. But they have to know that money doesn't grow on trees and that we've got a time period here where we hope to move on as a family in another direction. And the time to talk about is before they're in the house. Absolutely. Great okay. point. Make plan sure ahead. plan ahead. This is the deal. If you're going to come here, then we need to talk about it and have a family meeting. Okay. Uh, you guys have to come back. A <laughs> certified retirement specialist sitting right here and certified senior advisor. That's another whole chapter because Canadians are not ready mm. for retirement mm. and what's going to cost to do that mm. chapter. <sighs> First comes love, then comes money, and it affects all of life. Uh, the Money Couple, Bethany and Scott Palmer, have a great website with goodies on it that can encourage you. Tell us what that website is. TheMoneyCouple.com. And this book is available everywhere. Thank you for deciding right out of the gate that you would share the blessings of positive communication. That's what it's all about. Absolutely. God bless you both. Thank, Thank you. you.